Welcome back into the Opal Cutting Zone, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I was going to do this off camera, but I've decided it's a really important topic and we'll just do it on camera in a bit more detail than usual. Now, this is a stone I recently just semi-finished, but we noticed towards the end that there's some issues down over here. So I, I typically show this in videos a lot of the time, but I just want to focus on this one where you've got one tiny area in a stone that you want to redo. This could happen in a ring or a pendant if it gets a scratch or a little pit or something like that. A lot of the time opal is pretty soft so you can get it scratched pretty easily and there can be blemishes. So I'll show you what we do to be able to identify these and how to fix them depending on their severity. So on this one it's pretty hard to see. So if you can see it by the naked eye, I always suggest that you start off with the nova point, the 600 nova point, so the brown colour. If this isn't getting through it fast enough for you, you may need to go to the 280. But this, this would only be if you can really physically see it without any magnification really easily. So because this one, when I've got it on camera, it's hard to kind of find the spots that I'm talking about. I'm saying we'll go with this. You can also go with something like the grey 1200 Nova, but this removes really slowly. So if you can see it at all without magnification, this is most likely going to be too weak for you. So you might need to skip that one. And of course, anything higher like the 3000 pink, you're just not going to get anywhere. So the safe bet, if you really don't know, just go with the 600. It's uh, fairly easy to get rid of the 600 scratches. The 280 is quite a commitment, uh, quite a step back, especially if it's a finished stone and you're only trying to work one area. Now to identify a lot of this stuff, I just use nothing nothing fancy, just a Sharpie, any kind of permanent marker will do. And you just want to color in the area that you think has a little bit of an issue. So now once you've colored it in, kind of like that, you can either wipe it off with a bit of isopropyl alcohol, something like what you can see here, isopropyl alcohol. You can put it on a little piece of tissue, let it almost completely dry off. You don't want very much of it, otherwise you're going to end up getting it out of the pore as well. But then you can just give it a quick little wipe over. Now this stage isn't entirely necessary. What you can also do is what I do in most of my videos, and that's just grind over the top. You'll remove the outer edge stuff really quickly, but you'll see here what you're left with is these tiny little pits. If I get my little pointer stick here, you can see these tiny little dots. So those are little pits that I noticed that I'd missed. And it's really easy to miss little areas like that when you're in such a weird undulating zone. So it's always towards the valleys in these kind of pieces. Typically you won't miss anything on the peaks. The peaks are really easy to get to and you spend a lot of time going over them as you're going around the stone. These little areas that you really need to focus on because they're at the lowest point, they can always be missed. Now I always say go slow because it's much easier to get rid of them the first time round than what we're going to do today. So you can see here lots of little, little, little dots, little dots, little dots. Makes it easier to see without magnification. Of course you can skip this entire thing and just go with magnification if you want, but it's I just find it's much easier just to go with this method. Now whenever you're touching up a stone, you're never going to use something like an electroplated or a sintered diamond burr. These are just going to give you scratches like you wouldn't believe. I mean, you will. You'll know what they're like as soon as you use them, but never try to touch up any kind of small areas with a sintered diamond. If you go off slightly or anything like that, you're just going to make a huge mess and it's going to basically restart your stone. So now that you can see where those areas are, the basic order is going to be, because they're really tiny, the 600, then the 1200 and the 3000, then cerium oxide. So the basic idea is here, with the 600, what we're going to do is we are just going to hit maybe an area like this. I'll just recolor it in. An area like this is what we're going to focus on with the 600. We don't want to branch too far out here. We just want to focus on those little dots. The rest of the stone looks pretty good. You can see here from the flash, there's no little pits or anything in there. But in here are those pits. We're going to get rid of those with the 600. And then what we're going to do is when we go up a grit, we're just going to go another kind of texture layer thickness out. So then we're going to focus on all of this area with the 1200. And then 3000 again, we're going to go further out, further out, further out, further out. And then once we get to this point and we've hit all of this kind of area, we're going to go across the entire stone, front and back, 
with the serum oxide just to get a, a nice even little finish. It's really a it's really a fun process. That's the part when you can breathe easy and it's nice and nice and simple. So we're just gonna we're just gonna hit this area. We're gonna get this all done and then we can box it up and ship it off to the owner. But that is basically the gist of how I go about fixing small areas because complex carvings you will get small areas. I'm amazed that I didn't leave any pits in this area. This was the hardest part to carve. I focused on it and because I focused on that, I missed something over here. It's very easy to do, but it's also not that hard to fix. So we're gonna get around to it and we'll dive in right now. Alright, and we're off with the 600. Now, I won't show it in the footage, but I did actually find one tiny spot that was a bit deeper than the rest, and for that I used the 280 grit and then went back to the 600. It only took a little bit, but the 600 was working too slowly as I talked about before. So, I just had to go over that after, after this little part here, and then go back to the 600. So, I missed out on that, but that just goes to show, if you can see it with your naked eye, you definitely just want to go with the 280. You will remove material, but we're talking about... A, fractions of a tenth of a gram it's really not it's not going to remove carrots or anything it's going to move remove like a very small amount you won't really notice it we're not changing the shape too much we're just getting rid of those pits so there you can see we're done with the 600 and the texture still remains unfortunately a little bit to the right there you can see that the text has disappeared i didn't rub there with the 600 but when you've left the stone in water for a while the paint actually comes off especially once you've got a polished kind of surface if it's porous it's still going to be clinging on for dear life but if it is a polished surface because this one's already this is a rework the texture does actually just come off with the water and a little bit of friction with your thumb and finger so you've just got to be aware of that so here we're just doing a little bit wider than what the 600 was and you can see now the last of it with the 3000 now the 3000 though you're focusing on that little area there because we're going to go over the whole area with the cerium oxide polishing, you can actually just hit wherever you want with the 3000. It's not going to cause scratches that are going to cause you any issues because this is the stage before polishing anyway. Once you go to the polishing, it doesn't really matter. So you can do the whole, the whole stone with this since we're going to do the polish everywhere anyway. I find that the polish is always best to do everywhere. It just gets consistent. You might end up with one really shiny spot or one less shiny spot so best to do all of it and yeah that's pretty much it and there you go there you have it um it's a it's a great way to waste an extra hour really all all this did was recover a misstaged of about i don't know five minutes if i had done it properly the first time it would have cost me maybe an extra five minutes instead going back through it and doing it again to get rid of all those pits and getting it nice and shiny again this is done this is yeah lost me an extra hour or so so it really doesn't pay to speed up and just rush through things just between stages especially after the 280 you go from the 600 centered to the 280 at the end of the 280 that's where you've got the got to be the most diligent you can see that the color's actually gotten a bit better as well that's just a that's just a pleasant side effect But yeah, after that 280, dry the stone thoroughly, leave it out on the desk if you need to for a bit, just to make sure it's proper dry, and then just go over it and just have a look. Make sure that you don't have any kind of foggy areas or any kind of mist areas, because if you do, you just keep going, just keep going with that 280 grit. Don't just quickly jump across to the 600 and think, oh, it'll be all alright. Because the 600 doesn't really get rid of much, and then after that it gets rid of nothing at the 1200 and above. So you've really got to go that 280, it should just look foggy, it shouldn't look scratched, it shouldn't look pitted. Anything like that is a bad sign. I've also actually found another inclusion on this one that I'm thinking of getting rid of, but that will mean losing a bit more weight. Not much, maybe a tenth of a carat or less. But it is something that I'm going to consider, and I could just quickly do before I... Chuck it back up in this box and then send it off. It's been a lot of fun. I do like working stones like this. It can be really frustrating, especially now, but it has given me a really good opportunity to show this frustration and this would be the most frustrating part of any kind of opal carving. Even Justin over at Black Opal Direct, when he did his latest opal carving video, he did say he had to go back and redo a little bit. And this, this is what he was talking about. Like, you miss a small stage and it comes back to haunt you. At least I didn't have to do the entire stone, but I did the entire face here. 
and then I just polished across the entire stone again. So don't be like me, be smarter than me, do as I say, not as I do, and spend more time on your 280. Don't rush through your stages, drive between them, you're in no rush, and you'll actually save time by taking your time. So with that, hopefully you guys get to avoid this and you don't have to do it too often. As you get better, you will also find that you go back less often, either because you become more patient or because you can really, you've got a good eye for spotting spotting issues before you get to the end of the stone where you have to go back and repeat. So yeah, good luck guys, and I will see you in the next video.